Boy, Pop DiBiase with a Brian Baldinger, a.k.a. Baldy. You guys know this man from ESPN, CBS, many outlets. One of the best analysts to ever do it on the gridiron, man. How you doing today? I'm good, man. I mean, I love this. You know, we're, we're down you know, crunch time here. We're 48 hours away, basically. And we're still talking about it, you know, because there's so much to talk about. We Two teams that are very difficult not to like. You know, there's just so much on both teams. Okay. What is your analyst of the 49ers? Well, they're a very well-coached team. Um, they don't beat themselves. Uh, they have the most creative and explosive run game in the league. And when you can run the football in this business consistently the way the 49ers do, it sort of takes away a lot of the problems. And I mean, I love everything. I mean, I like the way the team is constructed. John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan have done an amazing job in these three years. Chiefs. Well, I mean, I've been around Andy Reid for 21 years. I was there in Philadelphia when he got the job. I've seen the way that he knows how to put a team together. But the quarterback is just so special. And you can't really overstate how good Patrick Mahomes is. You, because we really we love to compare athletes to other athletes, but there really is no comparison to what this guy is doing. And the way he sees the field and the speed that he has to work with, and the improvement on the Chiefs' defense, it's, it's marked. I mean, Steve Spagnuolo has done a phenomenal job. Perfect. All right, and let's carry on to some other news. We see that the Cowboys have just hired Mike McCarthy. How are you feeling about the Cowboys' future and them moving forward now that they have a Super Bowl-winning coach? Well, you know, you have to look at Mike McCarthy's background. I mean, he coached Joe Montana. He coached Brett Favre. He's coached Aaron Rodgers. I mean, look around any of these rooms here at the Super Bowl, you're seeing their pictures and their trophies. So I think a guy that has that kind of experience, if I was Dak Prescott, if I was Ezekiel Elliott, and I wanted to win championships, I'd gravitate towards a guy that has won championships and has coached great players. And I'd want to know what he can do for me to get the best out of me. Okay, and um, we see the Raiders are moving to Las Vegas and everything. Do you think that the Raiders may be in the market of moving on from uh, – Derek Carr, you know, he has a very heavy contract and everything like that. And, and would it look like it could be a just total overhaul or trying to bring in a savvy vet that might be a little bit better to carry them on down the way? I don't, I'm not, I don't have any intel, you know, on what they're going to do. Um, I, I would say this. If you're going to move on from Derek Carr, tell me what your succession plan is. Like, just don't make the move and then just go out there and have a wing and a prayer. Like, if you have a better plan that's better than Derek Carr, because outside of the one year where he, he got nicked up at the end of the season, he's been healthy, he's been productive. And I think that, you know, he still needs better talent around him. So he's at his best when he's really attacks and he's aggressive. And he's not always like that. And you say, okay, why? Is it the game plan? Is it him? Is it the weapons? But I'm not ready to move on from Derek Carr if I'm a Raiders or Raiders fan unless you tell me you have a better plan. And real quick about the move to Vegas. Well, I feel horrible about it. I thought Oakland was a great team player. I thought they needed a new stadium. San Francisco get a new stadium, they get a Super Bowl. Like the Raiders, they needed to figure that out somehow, whether it's sharing a stadium, which I know isn't the ideal thing, or getting a stadium built. Like I felt like Raider fans who have been so good for so long on a team that has been so – mediocre to poor that 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 city and that fan base deserve better i agree i agree now let's go ahead and talk about the draft a little bit um who is your favorite prospect coming out of the draft and what do you who do you who would you take at number one as well too well it depends it depends if i was cincinnati and i was moving on from andy dalton i don't know if they are or not but i mean if they are i mean we need a quarterback and there's joe burrow sitting right there now i don't know if he's the best quarterback in the draft or if it's Tua or Justin Herbert, I mean, I don't know, or Jordan Love. But I'm not taking um, – if I'm in a position to take a quarterback, then I'm taking the quarterback because that's what the Chiefs just did. You know, that's what the Houston Texans did. That's what the Eagles did. And now they can compete every year with that guy. So I think before I say, okay, Chase Young, Joe Burrow, some of the guys at the top of this draft, I kind of know – I got to need to know what my biggest need is. 
And that's, I totally agree with that. And I keep telling, you know, most people that you have to go with your fits, you know. And I feel like Cincinnati's fit would be more, you know, Chase Young. But the glamour pick is Burrow. I know that. And, you know, pretty much number two doesn't need a quarterback. Yeah, but I mean, look, there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be interested in Joe Burrow. So if you're Cincinnati, you should listen to what teams might offer. You may get in a real bidding war. And maybe you get so many assets that you can maybe still get Tua. Maybe you like Tua I mean, and still get so much more. I mean, they're going to be in a position, especially after what Joe just did. And if Patrick Mahomes wins this Super Bowl, it's going to affect the draft because you're going to say, if you get that quarterback, you can win a Super Bowl in three years. Teams will think like that. You don't pass them up. Perfect stuff. All right, one last question. Prediction, final score. I'll just keep it simple. I'll, I'll take the 49ers. I've liked them all year long, and I like them 28-24. Perfection. Thank you so much. It's your boy Pop DiBiase signing out for Fanatic Views with Ryan Baldinger. What's up, sports fans? Breon Page here with Fanatics View. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed watching and you want to see more content, subscribe down below.